thank you very much for your time and also for completely rinsing me out with this extraordinary story. Uh, I wanted to get a bit of a sense from you. Uh, what has been the most nourishing part of this project? I know it's a broad question. No, that's a good question. I, the, my mind initially went to like each stage of it. So each stage had was nourishing, like the writing stage, writing with uh, Will Fetters and Eric Roth, and then you make a sort of breakthrough. Um, I love hearing it read by my friends. I would ask them to read the script and, you know, learning about stuff. That, that I, I love the communal aspect of everything, the collaborative aspect. And then shooting the movie was incredible. Being able to cast a movie is really fun. Uh, and then the post pro process of editing the film, and you know, there were a lot of great moments. So really, the, the truth is, I think ch the fact that I got to actually have an idea and then see it all the way through to a movie that I could show you that that was thrilling I mean that is sort of that's the deal right I mean that's what you hope to do when you're a kid at least I did like god if I could ever make a, my own movie and you have yeah and were you prepared for the potent reactions you've been getting to this story I, I mean one sort of braces oneself for the worst case scenario <laughs> You know what I mean? So yeah, I think that's what I was bracing myself for, especially yeah. when you do something so personal and what someone, so many people have told you not to do, which mm. I would have told me not to do, like the fourth remake of A Star is Why, bro, <laughs> you know, but, um, so, but, but I felt something very deep down about it. And the fact that anybody feels that way, they connect to it. The fact that this movie could do what movies have done for me my whole life, uh, that's, that's like, you know, that's the, it feels like giving back. I mean, and that's the whole deal. When you have a job like yours and the byproduct, a big byproduct of that is fame, mm. um, I was intrigued by how much your experience and your career informed the story and the character of Jackson. I think a lot. Yeah, I mean, I mean, everything. I mean, whenever you co-write or come up with an idea, I mean, and then make it, it I don't know any other way than to make it mm. come from a personal place. Um, so yes, absolutely. And certainly Jackson's sort of relationship to fame, I think, mirrors mine for sure. You know, it's not something he really thinks about. He doesn't, it doesn't bother him when someone wants to take a mm. photo. You know, he just sort well, of... Well, but it didn't know. bother him. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, but I'm talking about his character. Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, but each character has their own relationship to fame, you know, purposefully in the movie. Uh, I find if I want a 100% smackdown of a film, it's often the little perfectly formed smaller roles. And mm. with Sam Elliott and Dave Chappelle, for me, they just, it was outstanding. Um, did you sort of draw from any particular film or filmmaker when it, come to, when it came to those kinds of roles? And bits oh, that's of interesting. Film? I mean, I, 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 you know, every, I, I love movies since I was a kid, so there's a lot of filmmakers that I, I drew from. But relating to what you just said, I'd have to say probably Mark. Certainly, Lorenzo and his, his the Greek choir of the drivers came directly from Taxi Driver, and um, and just and and Travis Bickle's um, sort of little little uh, Greek choir that of the, of the other Taxi Drivers, but uh, but also David O. Russell, who to me, you know, in the, in the three movies that I was a part of, I re you know every anybody that has a line or is on screen, he cares about and let's make them a fully realized human being, and I think I really learned about that about serving all the characters from him. But then just a movie lover and a lover of all the people that are in the movie, I personally felt if Dave Chappelle's going to agree to do the movie, I better do right by him. Because I want to see him as a viewer. I want to, if Dave Chappelle's on screen, I, I want to see what he's going to do. You know, and I want to give everybody an entrance. So like, he's got a great entrance. And Sam Elliott has a great entrance and Andrew Dice Clay. Um, this is parochial, a very small role, I know, but wonderful Kiwi Marlon Williams. Oh, who's amazing. How did you come across oh, man. him? I was driving up the PCH and on NPR, uh, they were playing this song and uh, it sounded just like, it sounded reminiscent of uh, Roy Orbison a bit, and uh, but so unique. And then it said, he's Roy, that's Marlon Williams, he's playing at the Troubadour Tuesday night. So I bought tickets and I went to the Troubadour and I saw him play and he blew me away. And then I said, is there any way? So then I, because I, I, I knew there was this, this part of the movie where I was going to write this uh the super group thing at the Grammy. So I thought, it's a Roy Orbison tribute. That way I can get Marlon Williams to come and do a cover of A Pretty Woman. And um, and that's how it all started. And he was kind enough to meet, and we recorded it with Brandy Carlisle, this sort of preamble to the song that I had in my head. And then we act, and by the way, he's a very good actor. I know yeah. he's acted a lot. Yes. Um, but we had a lot of fun. In fact, there was a much longer scene in there. And Marlon, I'm sorry, I, I tried to keep it as <laughs> much as I could. But the, there, we had a great scene between Jax and him on the stage. That was, he's, he, he was wonderful. He's great. He's just won our top songwriting award. This and he's, in, I mean, what a, yeah. what a, what a rock star. Yeah. Yeah. It was good to see. Hey, thank you so much. Thank what you. What an outstanding film. We loved it.